Okay, we are back and we have an interview for you and it's with Brother Ernie Lyon and he has a YouTube channel called SDA City Exodus and what we're going to do right now is give you his trailer, so to speak, before we go into our interview with him. So here it is. Hey guys, um, it's Ernie and Kim. Kim's back there. Hi guys. Welcome to our channel, City Exodus. And so our channel is gonna be a bunch of videos showing our family and our move to the country from the city. Uh, right now we live in suburbia, a very crowded place in San Diego. Um, you know, we're just seeing all the different things going on and you know the world is really just a lot different so spiritually um you know we've been reading a lot of scripture and, and spirit of prophecy see one of the quotes that i've got here it says in harmony with the light given me i am urging people to come out from the great centers of population our cities are increasing in wickedness and it is becoming more and more evident that those who remain in them unnecessarily do so at the peril of their soul's salvation and we've gotten this message so intensified uh, the last year and a half that we finally decided to start planning and start moving. Had so many different kinds of excuses uh, not to move out to the country, but as the message grew stronger and stronger to us, uh, all our excuses, uh, little by little, God had been you know, getting rid of uh, any excuse I had as far as occupation, money, Praise the Lord, He's done so much for our family to open up the pathway to get out to the country for our kids' sake. Um, and not only that, but a way to go from the country and be closer to God, but also um, to be able to do outreach in the cities. And so that's what we want to do. Our goal is to get out there, to be closer to God, uh, be, uh, be in nature and just, <laughs> and just um, go back into the cities and do a lot of our outreach and ministries. Uh, so stay tuned. Uh, City Exodus will, uh, will answer some questions that you may have because we had a lot of questions as well. Uh, like I said earlier, like what would you do for work out there? We're not retired, we don't have social security, we don't have, <laughs> that's Basil, my son, this is Kale. And there's Kim again. So stay tuned if you want to follow us and see uh, how we're doing it and what we're doing. Um, uh, leave your comments below and we will uh, answer uh, as much questions as we can. Um, so God bless. Be blessed and be a blessing. Bye guys. On the line with us is Brother Ernie Leon. And Brother Ernie, we're so, we're blessed to have you with us. Thank you so much for coming on. Oh, it's a blessing for me. Just want to greet all my brethren out there. Praise God. Praise God. So let's talk about the first two quotes you shared in your video, the one that we just heard. And there's one from, I think it's from Country Living, page nine. And it says, in harmony with the light given me, I am urging people to come out from the great centers of population. Our cities are increasing in wickedness. And it is becoming more and more evident that those who remain in them unnecessarily do so at the peril of their soul salvation. So this quote not only talks about, for example, saying the peril of their lives, it's talking about the peril of their soul salvation. So that is so much of a deep thought in and of itself. But it was God who brought this to your mind and you decided to use this in your video. What was your thought process when you put that quote in there? Wow, um, it is definitely a, a deep quote, and I'm I'm thankful to God bringing um, a lot of these quotes at the right time. And yes. so uh, that quote was used with the thought that uh, just the experience that I, I've I've been having with this journey when we made uh, the decision to move. Um, if I could, if I could take you guys back to uh, mm -hmm. 2017, um, I had been doing a lot of work in the church and outreach, and I. I was really at a point where I wanted to do more and more, you know. And uh, one day that prayer was answered, and I was, I was blessed to have the privilege to speak uh, and do a revelation uh, seminar in the Philippines um, on, an, on an island of Mindanao. 
And after having that experience and preaching uh, the urgent message that Jesus was coming <clears> soon, I had the privilege of being able to bring my family with me, my, uh, my son, uh, well, my eldest son at least, uh, Kale, and then my wife. And as we were there, we just spent all day just all about God, you know, doing God's work, doing the work together as a family. And after that, after the two weeks that I was there, I got back home, went back to the 12-hour job, and went back to the busy life and the routine of the everyday life and the stresses uh, that we went through every day as a family. And as I went home from work late at night and saw my, my son asking me to spend time with him, and I was busy on the phone because work was calling me after I had gotten more off work, and I just really just had to think about and pray and say, Lord, why can't I just have that life every day and do your work and be with my family? What can I do? And you know, at that point, when I really looked back and looked at work as I was going through every day, going to work, and I was just really, there's a different feeling uh, of, of what my life was after mm-hmm. experiencing that uh, mission trip. And uh, that's when I received the message. And that's when I received the country living message at the right time. And I, when I look back on it, there are some seeds that had been planted. And now uh, my, the answered prayer was, what, how can I have that life now? How can I have that spiritual life, that close relationship with you and with my family, uh, having a close relationship with you just all together? And that's how, that's how where the quote came from, to really uh, portray or to really uh, give you our experience in this, uh, in this short trailer that you just heard or watched. Um, it's really to give you our spiritual journey, not just the fact that we're moving to the country and maybe doing these things and how much it's going to cost or, or where we're going, but take you through what we're going through each moment and the experiences God is blessing us with, whether they may seem good or bad, uh, it's always for our character, right? Ultimately, that's what yeah. we're, we're out here for, is to develop our Amen. character and relationship with Jesus. So that's where the quote came from. What was I, what when I you, was going through? When you were on your mission trip in uh, the Philippines, uh, were you working in a country setting? Uh, no, it was actually a city setting. It was a very busy, crowded area. Very busy and crowded mm-hmm. area. Yes, many people crammed into a little uh, little city. It was actually the city of Cagayan de Oro, the city of gold um, mm. in, the city, uh, in the city of Cagayan de Oro, uh, Mindanao, in Mindanao. Yep. But the fact that you were able to spend time and do ministry with your family is what attracted you, Correct. Yes, and you know, the thing, the first thing I thought of was uh, Noah. You know, Noah was called out to give an urgent message, and not only with him, but he had his family engaged in the work and to the saving of his family, (laughs) right? Right. Okay, so now the second quote that you have in the video, it says, all that needs to be done cannot be specified until a beginning is made. Let me read that again. All that needs to be done cannot be specified until a beginning is made. Pray over the matter. Remember that God stands at the helm and that he is guiding in the work of the various enterprises. That's Country Living, page 19. So why this quote? What was God putting on your heart when you decided to use that one? Mm, wow, that's just a, that's a, that's a real good follow-up to that, that, that first quote. Um, mm-hmm. Because really, once the prayer was answered and what to do, now it's a matter of doing it. And uh, mm-hmm. so as we prayed uh, really hard and we got this country living message, we, um, we had to take a faith step. You know, we had to take a leap of faith. And as step by step, um, if, you, uh, if you see our experience and watch um, our channel, you'll see the experience that God takes us through step by step. And, you know, it's very difficult because when you pray for something, um, you have to be ready to receive the answer and accept the answer you're getting. It might not be something you want to hear, but it's a real right. faith check. So if you really want to have that experience, you really want that answer to, to my original question or my prayer, how can I have this all the time? How can I do your work and be together with my family? Well, here it is. As I'm reading and studying, here's the timely message. Here's the timely quote. Here's the timely uh, you know, divine appointment or divine providence. And as we... We decided to make changes in our life, simplify our life, sell our home, leave jobs that we've, we've our dream jobs pretty much that we've been working so hard for, leaving all that mm-hmm. behind, leaving family behind. We had to accept that answer 
And at first, it was very difficult to swallow, but I knew I just had to do it. I was so convicted. And until a beginning is made, you know what I mean? So uh, we just had to make that beginning. We had to take that first step. And as we took that first step, he, he took care of the rest. And that it is, yeah. even until now, you make that first step, you do what you can, you put in your effort, and he'll handle what you can't. And so that's what we, we've been learning <laughs> through this journey. Yeah. The beginning of that quote really is deep. All that needs to be done cannot be specified until a beginning is made. That's and right. that's when you, th- when you think about that, and that's like, wow. That is. Um, that is. Amen. Well, let me ask you this. You are in the country proper now, right? You are living in the country. That's right. I'm living in the country. Mm-hmm. Okay. When did, you act- when did you actually make the move, and how did the move go? Well, I am still settling in. I'm in the process of putting in a few things. Um, mm-hmm. It's been about a year um, okay. since we made the decision to move to the, uh, since we actually bought property. Uh, I moved out mm-hmm. here permanently uh, about two months ago. And in, from that, from the months before that, I had been coming back and forth, uh, staying at my in-laws in Nevada. Uh, coming back mm-hmm. and forth, waiting for certain things to happen and waiting for a home to be put on uh, on the property. And now that the house has finally been delivered, it's actually a prefab home. Uh, now we're getting work uh, on putting in a well, um, septic tanks and different things like that. Uh, yeah. So I am, yeah, that's where we're at right now. Um, how is your family adjusting to the move? Ah, the adjustment is, uh, it's, it's, it's been a big adjustment. Um, you know, we, we don't really spend time together as a family. My, my, my wife and two uh, young ones, uh, my two-year-old and my three, four-month-year-old is wow. in uh, Nevada with my in-laws waiting for my house to be completed so it could pass inspection and so we could actually be livable. Uh, right now, we're just staying at a friend's house in, in a room, me and my eldest son. He's my helper. He's, he's seven years old, and he's helping me out too. Uh, thank God he's put some people in place here to, to be able to house us while we're while we're building the home and, and the homestead. So praise the Lord for that. But it's been tough adjustment being away from your wife and your kids. But we try to see each other at least once a month. Uh, they come and visit and see the progress. And uh, definitely, definitely uh, 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 difficult, but uh, things that we're going through. But soon we'll be together soon. The house is almost done. So praise the Lord. We're, 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 we're yes, almost through that tunnel. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Um, I know it's still kind of early, kind of new for you, you know, but still I, I will ask this question. Have you learned anything over the past year? In other words, if you had a chance to start the year over, is there anything you would do differently? Wow. You know, uh, in one year's time, I think God has taught me a lot. <laughs> a lot. Yeah. I don't know if I've changed anything. Because there's so many okay. lessons uh, in during this move. From the moment that I made, that we as a family made the decision to move to the country and per, and move forward and put our efforts in it and rely on God, we've learned so much on patience, on character building, on true education, yes. country living, uh, agriculture, you name it. I thought country living was just going out and making sure you grow and, and plant things and grow, <laughs> but there's so much more yeah. entailed in country living. It's mm-hmm. it's the three angel angels' messages, the meat of it. I, I feel like it's a part of meat, a pe- part of the message that I never really understood or got until I, yes. I dove into country living. So there's just so much more so much more that we've learned. And I, w- I don't think I would change anything. I mean, um, because I know that God has put us through whatever he put us through to get us to where we are now, which is closer to him. And this is the closest I've ever been to him in my, in my whole entire life. And each day I, it feels like I'm taking one step closer to him. And my faith is just growing more and more. Although I stumble at times, <laughs> mercy, <you know? laughs> but uh, these yeah. are lessons that, uh, that are invaluable. You know, they are just priceless. Of that course. I couldn't have learned anywhere else. Except until I yes. made that move, you know. Uh, you know, there are people right now listening to, you know, listening to you, and they are feeling the tug to get up and go. But of course, you know, I find that people who feel that conviction, but they don't go yet because the things of this world are still in the way, and they can't see they can't see the future clearly when it comes to actually making a move. 
I mean, it's not like it's all mapped out in front of you. And a lot of the time, most times when God calls you, really all the time when he calls you, he wants you to make a, a, a faith move. It's not like he can map the whole thing out for you <laughs> before you go. It's, you know, right. it's got to be done in faith. So what do you want to say to the person that's listening who may be feeling the tug, but things of this world seem to have them strapped down and the move of faith seems impossible? Hmm. Well, the one thing is, you know, one thing I've learned as a Seventh-day Adventist is uh, Seventh-day Adventist, the, the name comes from just believing in the Seventh-day Sabbath. And uh, being mm -hmm. an Adventist, we believe in the second coming of Christ. And so mm -hmm. I believe if we truly believe that Jesus is coming soon, mm -hmm. no longer will our lives be normal, especially when he's calling you, especially when you've been convicted or impressed to do more than what you're doing now. You know, mm -hmm. I got tired of that job, that 12-hour job, and I, as I, you know, uh, participated and got involved in more church activities, I, I, I just knew there was something more that he'd want me to do. It just can't be it. I can't just be doing the everyday thing and being so much 80% caught up in work and secular things, you know, and just 20% time with God, there has to be more than that. And so if, if, mm -hmm. if the Lord is calling you and you've, if you've heard these messages, it's no coincidence. There's no coincidence with God. He's coming soon and he's trying to yes. knock on your heart to get you closer. We may think we're ready because we're, we're in the Laodicean uh, uh, era, I guess, the generation, if you call it. Uh, you know, we feel like mm -hmm. we know everything, and that's what I thought at one point. I knew everything. I, I knew all the, the doctrines, and, and that's fine. All I have to do is a few good works, and, I, and I'm there. I'm home free. But no, God has shown mm -hmm. me so much more, and I've, I feel like I don't know anything at all. <laughs> and so yes. I encourage uh, those who are listening to continue to study, because for me, the only way that I could hear God speak is through His Word. He only speaks through his word uh, to me. And so as I'm studying, he's answering my prayers by the words that are coming from the Bible and from Spirit of Prophecy. And so as I've, I've prayed to him, um, I just ask that, that uh, we all surrender ourselves completely and let him lead. And if he leads you to somewhere where it might be something unknown or uncommon, you're not the only one. Read the Bible. And all these characters yes. are brought in that same situation. And it turned out pretty well for for them. And uh, I'd like to be part of that, you know, part of that. And, and uh, to be able to surrender myself and to, the, to do the work in these last days. And to do that, we need to have the character of Christ. And so I agree. to prepare, we need country living. Um, you know, but at the same time, you know, I think if Jesus is coming soon, we have to think he's coming today you know, the way we act. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah. you know, country living could be the ultimate goal, but the lessons while you're in that journey of country living, of trying to get out to the country, those lessons will change your character. I, I could almost uh, guarantee you that. <laughs> Amen. Yes. And I agree with you. And by the way, here at the radio station, those of us who do work with the radio station, our, our motto, even before we work for the station, or do anything that day for the station. Our motto is righteousness by faith. And our goal Amen. is to reach that and achieve that. Let me ask you this question. Um, the 12 hour job. I mean, what were you doing? Ah, what was I doing? I was, uh, I was doing, um, food safety and quality for a, a large food company. And, uh, they're big okay. producers of, of, of meat. <laughs> I was able to preach the health message to some people there, so it was a, it was a blessing because <laughs> I received that message. <laughs> mm, wow. <laughs> so now that you're in the country, what are you doing? Well, now I was very fortunate because, um, you know, as, as we were able to uh, sell our home and, and pretty much uh, simplify our lives, we were able to pay off uh, almost all of our debt. And with that, it... Uh, we it was it opened the door to to working online, um, and so that's what okay. I'm doing right now. I'm doing a, a ESL online teaching, and uh, okay. it doesn't pay as much as my old job, but it it pays it pays what it needs to pay. And uh, hopefully, our, our self supporting Praise ministries God. will will kick in, and and uh, with God, uh, see it fit that I could drop that job and go full time into our uh, our ministries here. Um, then, yeah, that'd be that'd be a blessing. But until then, I'll just be patient and wait. <laughs> Amen. No problem. Did you grow up in this faith? No, I actually have. Uh, I was. Uh, let's say I'll, I'll tell you my my rebirth day 
is December 28, 2013. I, I say rebirthday because that's when I was baptized. I was born again. <laughs> December 28, 2013 <laughs> is when I gave my life to Jesus. Okay. Wow. And what about your um, your wife? My wife was uh, raised as a Adventist. Uh, she's, I believe, like third uh, third generation, third generation Adventist. Yeah, but she grew okay. up uh, kind of just going with the with the motions, and not until um, around the same time we we're both uh, baptized. She was rebaptized, and I was I was baptized for the first time. Okay, where did you guys meet? Uh we met through mutual friends. I was actually. Um, you know, mutual friends. Friends. I I was actually in a a little uh, like garage band or rock band, and uh, my wife was uh, friends with my drummer, and uh, it was his birthday, and that's how we met. And from there, uh, you know, from there, uh, uh, <laughs> we were married, and and I've been happy since then. <laughs> now, of course. Now, was that in the United States or the Philippines? That was in the United States. That was in the United okay. States. Yeah, that was actually in San Diego. Mm -hmm. Got you. Beautiful city. Yeah. Um, so as you go about your day and your studies and in terms of prophecy, you know, what has God placed on your heart? Is there anything you would want to share with the listener or listening audience before we go to break? Hmm. Well, I know that, uh, you know, recently I've just felt the, uh, I've just felt more of a compassion or uh, just, just, as we're doing outreach, you know, with with with, uh, with our ministry with City Exodus, I've, I've been able to be blessed with many testimonies and many people that I've contacted or that have contacted me, emailed me, or spoke to me over the phone. And and uh, there are many people who who want to leave and move out of the country and in different situations where maybe spouses aren't in agreement agreement with them, maybe their children don't want to go. Maybe it's financial financial hardship um, that's that's stopping stopping them from going, um, you know. And it's just my, my heart goes out to them, hearing all these different stories. And uh, mm. it's just, I think we just we really need to just pray for one another. And not only that, but as we move into the country, as you go to the country, don't forget the most important thing: we're not out here to retire; we're out here to work. We're to be here to be light around our community in the darkest places that are deprived of truth. And don't forget that key piece. And so what we've been doing out here is doing so much outreach here. And as you see these people, people that don't know God or people that, that, that don't have a relationship with God but have so many health issues, um, we all need mm -hmm. we're all called to be medical missionaries in these last days. And so Amen. meaning not just uh, in the health field, but to just fulfill a need of what they need. And that could just be being a friend, being someone to talk to. And so I urge you, as you think of country living, don't just think about your own family, but think of the others. When you think of Noah, when you think of Noah, he, he delivered an urgent message for those times before the end, before the world yes. was destroyed. And he didn't only have a Bible in his hand, or not to say a Bible, so to speak, but a message to share. He had a hammer on the other side. And if you think of what he was building, as in like country living, think of who he was thinking of in mind when he was building that ark. Was there enough room there for just his family or for animals, for their provisions, for their food, for mm -hmm. other people? Mm -hmm. He was thinking mm -hmm. of others. And so to, so must we. we. I believe in my heart, I have it really burning in my heart, that we must think of others as we move to the country, not just ourselves. Wow. That's excellent. Thank you so much for sharing that. And yes, Noah obeyed God. And as he obeyed God, he built his ark, and it, it was an ark of safety for that time. I was telling the listening audience that part of our art making in this time is character building. Because yeah. one, one day when you have to stand without a mediator, what gets you through that storm? It's a perfect Amen. character. Amen. So, you know, Amen. that is our arc of safety, building our, and obedience. You know, we have to obey God and go to the country, get your self together, but also build that arc of safety, which is going to be character building. I don't know of anybody who has not achieved that, who will get through that storm without a mediator. That's right. So, um, well, listen, how can people follow your ministry? Um, our ministry is called City Exodus, and so City Exodus, you can watch um, our episodes on YouTube. We have two segments. 
uh, one on country living or country living experience, and the other segment of, of City Exodus is the medical missionary or medical mission ministry, and that's basically to encourage others to be medical mission missionaries wherever they are, wherever you are, and so that, those are both to encourage uh, both for country living and for medical missionary work in these last days. And you could also see us on Facebook on, under City Exodus. Perfect, perfect. Brother, thank you so much for coming on and sharing, and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll follow. See, we'll follow you, see what you're doing, and bring you on again, and you can still be, a, you know, you'll be a blessing to others who, you know, have not heard you at that point. So thank you so much for sharing with us today, though. Uh, thanks be to God. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. God bless uh, this ministry as well, and, and bless all the brethren out there in their work and, and in their journeys. Praise God. And I look forward to the day when we're all heading up towards the New Jerusalem. We can talk about these days when we're on the radio and on the phone and, and deal with all this time. <laughs> so praise brother. God. <laughs> praise the Lord. So, Brother Ernie, thank you so much. Thanks for coming thank on. Thank you. Thank you.